everybody. This is Kristen from Christopia Studios. Yeah, you're seeing my face. It's scary a little bit. It's kind of scary. It's kind of nice being behind the camera and nobody can see you. But today, I've been saying for a while that I was going to show you how I use the paint peelings that I pull off of my tray. I can't show you the tray right now because there's a painting drying on it. But I wanted to show you, a lot of people are like, what do you do with all those drippings? Is it just waste? And a lot of people in the pouring community save them. For example, I saved this really big, awesome colored turquoise one. Um, and I just peel it off the surface of where I'm pouring. I have one of those um, wa washer, clothes washer tubs that catches like dripping or flooding from a clothes washer. I bought it super cheap. It was like $12 or something like that. Um, and that's where I do most of my pouring, anything that's small enough to fit inside that tub, which is almost everything except the giant canvases. Um, but people ask, what do you do with these? Well, I do on occasion make jewelry. Um, I can show you a couple little pieces, but actually what I'll show you is the... I cut them in little little circles <laughs> for my circle jewelry and I, I glue them in. Um, now these were kind of my cast off rejects. I don't think I'm gonna use them for jewelry. Plus they're probably sticking together right now because I wasn't very careful putting them away. Um, but what I'm going to do eventually is a very large, very intricate mixed media piece. A lot of people in the core community call these paint skins. It's creepy, but it is, it's pretty descriptive because they're just like, acrylic paint turns to this plasticky material when it dries. So you can cut it, you can, you can use it in myriads of things, but what I do is I'll cut it into the shapes that I want in this really big mixed media project I intend to do. Um, it's, it's forming in my head, it's probably going to be some kind of natural landscape but probably with creatures or animals moving through but i haven't fully decided yet what it's going to be um heck it might even turn out to be some giant fantasy thing with people and dragons and all kinds of arcane creatures moving through because i i seem to see dragons a lot in my stuff so anyway this is how i store my skin a lot of people just say they layer them and i do when i'm not got the right product. I layer them between pieces of parchment. But when I want to access them, then I can't I can't access them without moving every single piece of parchment and looking to see what I have, which is a pain. So I saw someone online saying this is how she stored them. You just get these sheet protectors. I buy them in bulk. And there was a hundred sheet protectors for like $7.95 or something like that on one of the stores on Amazon. And I keep them, I sort them in these little things and I keep them in my sheet protectors. And I sort them, I try to sort them by um, color grouping. And this way you can see both the front and the back because sometimes the back side, the underside of the peeling is more interesting. Than the front side but instead of keeping them in a stand-up notebook you don't want to do that because they're all going to slide down into the bottom of the sheet protector like these did lesson um instead of putting them in a thing i just lay them i stack them a binder i just stack them on top of each other but these are much easier to move around and sort through because i've got them grouped by color and they'll they'll kind of stick to the sheet protector after a while, but they very easily unstick when you're ready to use them. That keeps them kind of from sliding if you accidentally pick one up this way. It'll keep them from sliding over the top of each other because if you have a piece of acrylic paint like this and this is folded over on it, this will eventually stick and you won't be able to get it off. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. Just sorting through. I've got quite a few of them, but I ran out of sheet protectors, so I was just layering them until I got more. So that's what I'm going to do today. I tend to just start at the top 
and I'm going to do this one. And you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily need all this black stuff that's up here on the edge of this. The back side is interesting. This is from two or three different paintings and the blue just layered over the top of that black. But I want it to fit inside the sheet protector and I want it to fit inside the correct way. So it's got to go this way down the top. Yeah, that way they're all the same. And I'm just going to trim off these edges that I don't want. And there's a piece down here that's, that did double over in the past, but I'm just going to leave it there because when I do a multimedia project, it doesn't matter if it's got a little thickness to it. It's going to have texture. So I'm just going to cut around this. And make sure it fits within that notebook and isn't sticking out. There's a little still sticky outiness. So I'm gonna just trim off a little more off this end over here. That big wrinkle overlap I don't like, so I'll just get rid of it. All these scraps are just going to go in the trash. All these scraps that aren't pretty and don't have any use. I do keep scraps that aren't pretty because, you know, sometimes in a landscape, you're actually, um, everything's not pretty. There might be a rocky outcropping. There might be a lava flow. There might be something that requires just kind of mottled, icky colors. So that's what I did. Stuck that in there. Now, for a lot of things, you might find much smaller bits and pieces like this. These are a lot of small pieces that peeled up off of one pour, but I found they had interesting patterns on them, so they might actually fit within. I'm gonna I'm gonna take off the ragged edges because they're hard to work with and really thin, and I'm going to try to make sure I put in one sleeve, I gotta open my new sleeve. I'm gonna try to make sure that in my new sleeve, I keep colors matched together. I want colors that are, like this is, these are, these are from some monochrome pores that I did. All that's in here is white, black, and gold, and gray maybe a little silver. So a couple of them have a tiny bit of blue running through them, but most of these are very monochrome colors. So I'm gonna group those monochrome colors together in a sleeve, and that is how I do it. So, um, I'm gonna, sometimes it's a pain in the derriere to get it in there. And I wanna put it in to where it's not taking up all the space so I can fit these other smaller strips in here too and group them together in the same page. When I'm done putting them all in their sleeves, I also group them by, by color group. For example, all the warm colors like yellow and red and, and those orange, etc. All of those warm colors are gonna go into the same grouping. That way when I'm flipping through and say, uh, maybe I want a big orangey sunset in, in whatever I'm making. Um, I'll be able to flip through to those warm colors and find all of the paint drippings in those warm colors. But what I love about them is they look themselves like mini pores. They're really cool patterns and stuff. And that's why I don't like this to go to waste. This is paint. And so I don't want this to go to waste when I'm um, when I'm pouring. So I'm gonna save these and make something really cool. I hope it, it's really cool. It might turn out dumb, but um, I hope not. I like to think that I have a decent eye for doing stuff and I like to experiment and do new things. Um, some of you who are new to my channel might not know that I most of my videos so far have been pouring videos. Um, but I also love to paint 
and teach acrylic painting. I like to embellish my pores with more quasi-realistic things or fantasy creatures. Whatever I see coming out of it, it tends to be what I embellish with. And sometimes that's a dragon or a phoenix or, or a snow leopard. And sometimes it's a person. I've done a couple flamenco dancers that I just saw coming out of a really pretty pour. Um, so go back and check out those other videos if you're interested in seeing that stuff. I also am, have, have always done realistic stuff. I stopped for a long time doing commissioned portraits of realistic pets and people. Um, I don't do that. I haven't done that for quite some time. I kind of got in a rut. I was in, I went back to get my master's degree in English and a partial in psychology and um, I should have done fine arts. <laughs> Let's just face it, I should have. But um, I've taught, I've done mental health I've services, I've done all kinds of stuff. But I really, really, um, just keep coming back to art. I used to do commission portraits for pets and people in graphic pencil. Um, maybe I'll show you a few of those at the end of this video. And in um, colored pencil, I've done some, and in acrylic paint. But recently, I have become fascinated with pastels. Pastels are so versatile, and they're kind of like drawing with acrylic paint. They're chalk pastels. I don't use oil pastels. I like the chalkiness. I have um, these pastels called pan pastels, which are just little, they look like little makeup trays that you can use little brushes that look kind of like makeup pad brushes. They're not, they're not quite the same, but they're similar to, to do a lot of tonal values. And then with pastels, like with acrylics, you tend to paint from dark to light. You want the lighter things in the front of the picture. And pastels are the same way. You can start with dark values and paint light on top, or draw, or however you want to say it. Lots of people say pastel painters, but um, it looks like a painting when you're done. But um, I really enjoy that freedom to do dark things and still be able to put a bright, bright white whisker over the top of, of a black cat. So, you know, black cat's not a black cat. If you look at the values in a, in a photograph, you're going to see blues and you're gonna see grays and silvers and all kinds of neat colors in a seemingly black creature. But um, I'm finding it really fun. And just recently, a couple videos, a few videos ago, I, I showed you my very first pastel cat on a, and I'm just going to put these over here. This is just, as I said, it's parchment paper. I bought it in a roll at the grocery store. You can use it to cook on too, but I wouldn't advise cooking on it after you've had acrylic paint all over it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I put these between my canvas paintings as well to store so they don't get sticky because acrylic paint, if it gets humid, will stick. So you don't want that. So anyway, this is what I'm doing. I'm still finding these grayscale values and I'm putting them in here together. And I'm peeling them up to see what to reveals the next thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna speed this up. If you feel like continuing to watch, fine. If you don't, fast forward to the end and we'll talk a little more. And, and I'll see you then. So there it is. These, none of them, there aren't enough colors that fit together. 
to put those in things yet. So, I'm going to pull a piece of, few of these up so when I do peel up my next parchments, I'll have them. Always reuse, recycle, all that good stuff. And one tip that you might know, let me pop you back up here. So, that's that. Um, that's how I save my paint peeling, paint skins, whatever you want to call them. And um, it's a good way to not waste paper and to have something on hand to do some kind of other multimedia thing. Or as I said, to make jewelry or to do any one of those things. So I'm going to wrap this up. I had a few left at the bottom that didn't match any colors, so I couldn't really, didn't want to put them together in, in off colors, so I'm going to leave them there until I have more things to peel. So one tip I want to give you, and I know you've probably heard me say this before unless you're new to my channel, is that um, you don't want to rinse acrylic paint down the sink. You don't want to rinse things down the drain. If you want to rinse something out, go outside, use the hose or an outdoor spigot so that the paint lands on the ground, doesn't go into your drains. The reason is because as you see, these paint skins are, are basically plastic. When acrylic paint dries, this is what it turns into. And when it gets stuck together, this is what happens. It sticks together and it stops unsticking. So imagine a nice big wad of this that cold water has rinsed down the drain hitting that U-bend or hitting a bend further down in your plumbing. This will kill your pipes and you will not be able to rotor rooter that out of there. Um, especially if you have a septic system, just do not. But um, just so you know, it will destroy your plumbing. What I do is I let things, I wipe things off with a rag that's too, uh, old t-shirts usually of mine or my husband's that are too um, messed up to be redonated or worn or anything like that. And I, I use rags to wipe everything off. I reuse my little pouring cups, my containers. I might have used this three or four times. Sometimes if it gets thick enough in here, you can just peel the paint right out and throw it away that way. Um, but you can continue mixing in these, in cups like this. These are two good yogurt cups. I, I eat low carb, so <laughs> I reuse my yogurt cups too. So um, that's what I do. I let things dry. If I have stir sticks, I'll dry off the stir stick and use it over and over and over again. Um, if I do need to rinse anything out or use water to rinse anything out, that water gets dumped outside on the ground in, a, in, a, in an area where it's not going to mess up the soil or cause problems, um, usually on an old dead stump that I have outside. <laughs> but anyway, so that is what I do with my paint skins. I'm just going to leave them to lay here. I might eventually get folders to put them in to lay flat, like a red folder for all the warm colors, blue for all the cool colors, etc., etc. But for now, this will do until I begin my big project, which may be soon. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had a good time. Please hit that notification down there, uh, the little bell, if you want to get notified of new videos. Hit that little thumbs up if you like my video, or, you know, the thumbs down if you didn't no skin off my nose it's it's youtube analytics and um hit that subscribe button i would really greatly appreciate more subscribers i hope you have a great day i hope you're staying safe have a good one